Welcome back, puzzlers, to more Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Let me open up the trunk and see about any new mysteries or journal entries. Man, there are so many new entries here. I had hoped Raymond would remember something of last night, but it's as I feared. He remembers nothing. How could someone go through something as jarring as a kidnapping and remember nothing of it? Now I must put my curiosity to the side and return to our search for the golden apple. Perhaps Matthew can tell us something. Talking with Matthew revealed that the Reinholds formerly had another servant in the employ. Unless I'm mistaken, Matthew was referring to Ingrid, the nanny pictured in that old photo we saw earlier. She is usually out by the general store at this time of day, so finding her shouldn't prove too difficult. Ingrid told us the story of how Flora's mother passed from this world. The Baron must have truly loved his former wife, for her grave lies within his garden, presumably so that, even in death, she could stay close to him. Lady Violet's grave is truly a beautiful place. The Baron's devotion and love for her is reflected in every detail of the place. Matthew mentioned the Baron kept a journal detailing his thoughts. If we can find it, I imagine there is much we could learn from its pages. The pages of Baron Reinhold's journal were filled with passages reflecting upon his deep love for his child and late wife. Additionally, we discovered that the Baron left a note disclosing the location of the Golden Apple in the possession of his good friend. Perhaps Ingrid knows who the friend is. Sadly, even Ingrid, despite her intimate ties with the Reinhold family, had to admit that she had never heard talk of a golden apple during her time at the manor. Ingrid recommended we pay Zapone a visit. And so we shall. Really though, does that man ever have anything useful to say? Okay, so let's get back to it. The last episode I concluded by talking with Lucy and solving one of her puzzles, but I can talk to her again. Hey mister, it's good to see you again. See, I'm totally stuck here, and I could really use your help. My friend told me this puzzle the other day, and I just can't solve the thing. Can you help me? On Valentine's Day, your gadget-loving, technophile girlfriend gave you the most unusual slab of chocolate. While the jumble of letters looks like nonsense, if you manage to decode the letters written on the chocolate, a message from your sweetheart will appear. What is she trying to tell you? Uh... G-E-C-Y-N-W let me try to convert the letters into numbers. She's a technophile, so maybe she likes numbers. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G is 7. Let me go over here. So G equals 7. And then maybe the 7 can be like a T, right? And then E is 4. And maybe that can be an A, so Tay so far. Let me do this. Like this. And then C is 3, which is a B. Oh, sorry. I meant like this. Which can kind of look like a B tab. Alright, it sounds like this is forming something, so I'm excited. Why? Oh my god, I'm going to have to count. So, 26 letters in the alphabet, Z is 26, so Y would be 25, which, ugh, 5 can be an S, but what can a 2 be? So, let me just put like an X for now and an S, or not an X, let me put like a little asterisk so I don't confuse it for an actual letter. And then it would be a space, and then an N, 14. 14, which would be an I and an A. I and an A. And then W. Which would be 23. And again, I don't know what the 2 would be. But the 3 could be a B. So tab... Let me write it down at the bottom here. Tab. And then there's a space. 
and then an I A B. I don't think this makes any sense. I cannot make a phrase out of that. So that's clearly not the solution. Let me reread the puzzle, see if there's any other hidden secrets in there. On Valentine's Day, your gadget loving, technophile girlfriend gave you a most unusual slab of chocolate. While the jumble of letter looks like nonsense, if you manage to decode the letter written on the chocolate, a message from your sweetheart will appear. What is she trying to tell you? I'm trying to rotate it in my head and see if anything appears, but I don't see anything. Like if I rotated, maybe if I rotated 90 degrees to the left, maybe that G could become a U. Maybe that E could become a W. Maybe that C could become a U. But that no, that doesn't make any sense. Now the other thing that's kind of weird. I don't know if I can draw on this. Yeah, I can. Okay. So, um, there's like little chomps missing. Which is weird. So then I wonder if it's like Morse code? Like dot, line, because it's two in a row, and then line. But I don't know Morse code. What is dot, line, line, and Morse code? Would they expect me to know that? I don't think they would. Apparently, dot slash slash is a J, so obviously that doesn't solve anything. Yeah, I figured that's too little to be a full Morse code message. The problem is, I don't even have a guess. I'm at the point where I kind of just want to guess something, see if it's right, and... You know, they give you a little hint sometimes when you get it wrong, but I don't even know what to put. I wonder if this is another really obvious one that, you know... Everybody watching already saw and then I'm being an idiot. I'm looking at the picture itself trying to look for any like hidden pictures or anything. Like see the shading here on the paper. I'm trying to see if I can find any letters or anything on there. Maybe if I spell it out phonetically like guessy now. Go see now. No, that E kind of throws it off. But the E doesn't have a bite mark on it. The G has a bite mark. The C has a bite mark. The Y has a bite mark. This one does not. This one does. And this one does as well. So if I spell it out or sound it out, you could go like G, G, C, E, go C, N, uh, Na, U. I sound like an idiot, don't I? Hooked on phonics, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, I'm thinking like, go see now. Because the E doesn't have a bite mark, so maybe you just ignore it altogether. So I'm thinking it's going to be go see now. I don't have another answer, so I'm going to try that. Oh, is it two words? It's two words. So it cannot be go see now. Okay, well, at least I got a hint. The hint is that it is two words. I don't know. I am I'm completely stumped on this one. And I will probably have to do a little bit of editing on this puzzle because otherwise I'm going to be staring at it for an hour. I don't know. So maybe I can look at the direction of the bite marks. So... The one on the G is up. And then the E is... I'm just going to leave a zero for blank. And then left. Left. And then it's uh, another blank. And then right, right. And then maybe if I... Take the letters... So, for example, the G is the first one, so I'm going to take the first letter of up. Does that make sense? Yeah, G is the first letter, so I'm going to take the first letter of up and do that. So, it's going to be a U. 
and then there's a zero. I'm just gonna put an asterisk for now. And then C is the third one. I'm gonna take the third letter of left, which is gonna be F. So I'm gonna put an F right there. And then Y is the fourth one. So I'm gonna get the fourth letter here and put a T. And then it's gonna be a space because it's that space chocolate. So the six, see, but there's no six or seven letters for right. Unless you rotate through. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is not going to be right. And then seven will be I. That doesn't look like anything. Unless you know what could be the case. The bite marks could indicate subtraction or addition. For example, if the bite mark is at the top, that could mean like add one to G, so like H. And then if it's here, add another one, like two. And then here will be three, here would be four. So C, D, E, F, G. So this C would turn into a G. Let me try that. So the G would become an H. The E would stay the same because there is no bite mark. The C would become, yeah, one, two, three, four. So C, D, E, F, G. So it would be G. Then the Y would also add four to it which resets the alphabet. It'll be Z, A, B, C, which doesn't make sense unless the number is different. Maybe you subtract. So G minus one would be F. E would stay the same because there's no bite mark. And then C, you subtract 4, B, A, Z, Y. And then Y, you subtract 4. Nah, that's not going to work either. I feel like I'm onto something here, though. They say gadget loving, and then they go on to emphasize it by saying technophile. So there's a hint there somewhere. I just don't know what it is. Oh, you know what it is. It might be like those old school cell phones. You know what I'm talking about? The old school cell phones that had multiple letters assigned to a single number. So then I could look at where G would line up and see what other letters might be there. And then try to make a word that way. But I don't even, I need to find like a picture of like the old phones with, with the different letters attached to numbers. Okay, so here we go. I got my phone up. And then one has no letters attached to it. Two has A, B, C. So my number four has G, H, I. So the first letter could be one of these three. The E could be D, E, F. The C could be A, B, C. The Y could be W, X, Y, Z. And then the second word, the N could be M, N, O. By the way, I know I'm taking forever on this puzzle, so you know, you can always skip. You can always fast forward. M, N, O. And then the W could be W, X, Y, Z. So maybe that's the solution. I kind of like this idea. Because it kind of ties in the technophile gadget loving thing to it. Now I just kind of have to look at these and see if I can form a word out of it. So you can't have GD. You can't have HD. But you could have ID next to each other. Okay. You could have GE, HE, IE. I'm trying to think of some words with IE. I'm sure there are one, so I can't eliminate any of those. 
You can't have GF. You can't have HF, but you can have IF. And then again, GD, HD is not going to work. ID will work, so I can try this. IDA, I, IDAW, IDAX, IDAY, IDAZ. That doesn't work either. So I can get rid of the D. So the second letter has to be that E. Which I like because the E doesn't have a bite mark on it. So I like that it ended up being E regardless. So let me try like ge Gya is not a word. Gyax is not a word. Gye. Gyaz. None of those are words. Gabo. Gabax. Gabai. Gabby. Gebs. I don't know, man. This is probably one of the most difficult puzzles I've come across so far in this game, in my opinion. This is a doozy. Man, I really like that phone idea. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The old school phones that, you know, like call 1-800-LAWYER-UP or whatever, and then you have to find the number that corresponds to the... You know what I'm talking about. It didn't work anyway, so I, I don't know. I just felt like it should have worked, so I'm disappointed it didn't. And I don't know what else to do here. Is this like slang or something? Like shorthand? Like LOL or something? It can't be because the answer is only two words. I'm getting wrecked by this puzzle, dude. Oh my god. Okay, well... I have no idea, so I'm going to just sound this out phonetically again. And I think like the only way I can make it work, instead of like, go see now, I think what I can do... I think the little bite marks are a uh, red herring, so... I think it could be like, guess... Guess... Now? Guess now? Guess now? Because that kind of fits in with the theme of the puzzle. I don't like that at all, but I, I just literally have nothing else to guess. And that's what kind of made me see this is, I was like, what do I even guess here? And then I was like, I guess I could make this sound like guess now. Is it, yeah, maybe that's just my subconscious talking because I really just want to guess right now and move on with my life. But the why the... That's a stretch, because it's like, guessy now. Ugh, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna put guess now. I know that's probably not it, but I have no better idea. Can never figure out how to do this E. I thought the little hat on the top part would help. Dang it, let me try like a lowercase e. My god, dude. It's like not only is this puzzle impossible, but it's also impossible to put in like your... Your little answer. There we go. I guess if you're fast enough, you can do it. I'm gonna do that, guess. Now. There's no way that's it. I just run out of patience. I don't know what else to think or try. There we go. Well, that was obvious. I suppose I thought wrong. Try again. If you can't figure out what she's trying to tell you, she's going to be pretty steamed. Is that a hint? Usually they give you a hint, but I don't see a hint here. Try again. If you can't figure out what she's trying to tell you, she's going to be pretty steamed. Steamed. Dude, this is impossible. That little hint didn't help me at all. She's going to be pretty steamed. How does that help me? 
Oh my god, dude. I don't want to use the hint coins. I don't want to use the hint coins at all. I want to hoard them all for the 100% completion. I mean, I it has to be like a four-letter word and a two-letter word. There's no way around that. And that kind of makes sense with how you're able to input it here. Maybe I should just try to think about what she would try to say, right? Like, so what would she say that's four letters and two letters? So maybe like... Love me. Something like that. Or, uh, call me. Call me. Call me. I like that. The only problem is that with the call me, like the two L's here, wouldn't make sense because it's like a Y and a C and they both have the little bite mark here. So there's no, you know, these are clearly different symbols, so they shouldn't correlate to the same letter. So I don't like call me, but maybe love me works. Love me. Or she's a technophile, so it could be like, text me. What year was this game made? I think it's like 2000, so I don't think it's too early for texting. So it could be like, text me. Which would work, because all of these are unique. And I kind of like that for another reason too, because like, if you do text me, all the little chocolates with a bite mark, change the letter. Or sorry, this is an E. But then the E stays the same, and that's the only one without a bite mark. So, text, text me. I kind of like. So this is... What is going on here? So M is one less than N, so maybe a little hole over here means you subtract one. But that wouldn't make sense, because then that wouldn't turn a W into an E, so that's not it. Mail me. Mail me. A technophile wouldn't use this snail mail. I don't know, man. I don't know why, but I like text me. Again, that's just me trying to think, like, what would she actually say, because I can't figure out the pattern here at all. And then the other reason I like this is two reasons. Number one, she's a technophile, she likes technology, so she would like a text, right? And then the other reason I like it is because the only letter that stays the same is the one without a little bite mark or whatever. So I like that, but... I don't know if that's what we're getting at. And this is 2000, like, texting wasn't super mainstream back then yet, I don't think. I'm trying to remember. 2000. Yeah, texting was not a very big thing back then. So I don't like that. I do like call me a lot. I like call me. The only problem is that the two L's here... You know, these are clearly different pieces of the puzzle, so why would they both be L? Unless there is, like, some weird little rule. I think I'm gonna go with text me. Just because the E without the bite mark. And then the fact that she's a technophile. And then the letters would fit, so text... Me. The only thing that makes me nervous about this is... Again, this game came out in 2000, and not many people were texting back then. But maybe that plays into the whole technophile thing. You know, she's so techy that she's doing something that not many people are doing. I kind of want to try it just because I literally have nothing else to try. And then maybe I'll get another hint. My god, dude. So, yeah, let me, let me do that. Text me. Okay. Let me see what the next hint they give me is going to be. Really? Critical thinking is I really want to see, like, what the deal is with this. 
Excellent. Your girlfriend's message just texted me. The bites taken out of the chocolate show how each letter written on the chocolate relates to letters on a keyboard. What? Gee, it's like pointing. The G has a little arrow pointing to it, which is up. What? Oh, come on. Really? I see what it's doing. So the G has like a little bite mark on the top. So the letter right above G on a keyboard is the T. And then the E doesn't have a bite mark. So it stays an E. The C has a bite mark on the left. So left on the keyboard is an X. Come on, dude. Really? That's, that's too much. That's too much. How's anybody supposed to know that? Or see that? I don't buy it for a second. I got the answer, but it's because I guessed. I made an educated guess. There's, I'm sorry, there's no way. If you got this, like, without a hint on your first try, let me know in the comments, and I'm gonna call you a liar, because I don't believe it. There's no way. Okay, I'm done being salty. Let's continue. Oh, is that all you had to do to figure it out? Why didn't I think of that? Because nobody can think of that. Nobody. That. I don't like that puzzle. Can you keep a secret? Don't tell Andrea you told me the answer, okay? Thanks, mister. Wow. So, I've been recording for 37 minutes. And that's literally the only thing I've done all episode. Is talk to Lucy. And suffer in that puzzle. So, I don't know how I'm going to edit that. How long, like... That puzzle's gonna look with all the editing. So I'm gonna keep playing. Maybe this would just be a little bit of a longer episode. I can't have an episode with just one puzzle. So yeah, let me... Let me go. Let me go up. Then there is gonna be a hidden coin here. And now I can talk to Zapone. Close friends of the Baron. It's true. I had the pleasure of meeting Baron Reinhold a few times. Mr. Zapone, you didn't happen to be good friends with the Baron, did you? Me? Ha ha ha, oh no, I was nothing of that sort. Can you think of anyone at all who was close to Baron Reinhold? No, I didn't really know him. Well, there was that one possibility. No, wait, never mind, I'm not sure. I guess Zapone can't really tell us much of anything. Yes, I'm afraid he was no help at all. I suppose that means we're back to where we started. But at least we can be sure that this close friend we're after is a resident of St. Mystere. We mustn't give up, Luke. Let's continue to ask around. Alright, let me take this right tunnel. And there is going to be a hidden coin here. And there's a paper on the floor as well. Professor, there's something on the ground here. You're right, it appears to be a scrap of paper. Will you check if anything's written on it? Sure thing. Let's see here. The boss complimented my latest model today. He's a good guy, and he's given me a new sense of purpose. I'm sure this is my true calling. I want to perfect my skills so I can repay the man for his generosity. This sounds like a great deal, like a journal entry, doesn't it? Judging by how the writer uses the term, the boss, I imagine he was under the employ of the Baron. I've constructed models to fit every situation just like the boss asked me to do. I gotta smile when I see how interested he is in them. That's the end of the entry. Do you suppose this person made some sort of models for a living? Hmm. Man, like I told you in episode 1, I played this game like 15 years ago or something. So I don't remember, like, I definitely don't remember the puzzles. I'm surprised I don't remember that one I just struggled with. I feel like that's something that's going to be burned in my memory till the end of time, but... I also don't remember any of the storyline in this game, surprisingly, so I'm trying to remember, like, what the actual storyline is here, but... I kind of like the fact that it remains a mystery to me. That's enough rambling, let me talk to Gerard. Not being a member of high society myself, I've never so much as had a conversation with Baron Reinhold. Now, Sonny, 
Much as I'd like to keep chatting, I'm awfully tired. I think I need to go lie down. Are you feeling unwell, sir? I'm just plumb exhausted lately. It's that awful noise coming from the tower, you see. It's gotten so loud I can't sleep a wink at night. Do you know what's causing the noise? It's just a rumor, but I hear every time the sound rips through St. Mysterious, someone disappears. They say the one who goes missing are people who have been talking about feeling tired. But those who disappear are back before you know it, so it's probably just a load of poppycock. Whenever the noise sounds, someone disappears. Interesting. Do you think the peculiar sound has anything to do with that strange old man who abducted Raymond? It's certainly a possibility, isn't it? But why would he release his victims after going through the trouble of kidnapping them? So, I'm a little bit concerned for this guy. Because people get fatigued before they disappear. And now he's fatigued, so that's not good. Let me talk to him one more time here. You two are certainly crazy about puzzles, aren't you? I've got a whopper of a puzzle for you. If it's half as bad as that other one, I'm gonna die. A number of five-sided shapes are hidden within the picture below. How many can you find? Answer when you think you found every hidden shape. Five-sided shapes. I'm not seeing a single one. See a bunch of four-sided shapes. And then three-sided shapes. Yeah, I see triangles. I see squares. I'm not seeing any pentagons. Is the answer zero? Is it as simple as that? Is it as simple as zero? Or am I missing something here? It's zero, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. I almost made a big mistake. I almost made a big mistake. It's like this. So there's one. And then here's two. So that's two. And then here's three. And then four. Okay, so that's four right there. So four. There are more. Maybe like... Like this. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then, so that's five. And then the same thing on the other side. Yeah, something like that. So that's six. And then... Did I already do, like, this one? So that's seven. And then the opposite of it, that's eight. And then on the side here... That's nine. And then on the other side... That's 10. I think it's 10. Yeah, so... I already did that one. And then on the other side, that's 2. Oh, 10, but... Um, yeah, I did it like this, so there's actually going to be two more, right? 
like here. Or did I already count that? Man, I'm forgetting like which ones I already counted or not. Ah, let me just start over. I'm sorry. Here you go. One. Two. Three. Four. Okay, so that's four. And then we're gonna do... Five. And we're gonna do... Six. And you can kind of do that on every side, can't you? Yeah. Seven. Eight. So nine. Ten. Eleven. And twelve. Twelve. What else? No, I think that's it. I think that's it, because there are like three shapes you can do, and you can rotate them through like all the four corners. So three times four is twelve, so I'm actually pretty confident. I'm gonna go with that. Luke, here's my answer. Nice. Another puzzle solved. Hopefully a little bit of redemption from that stupid chocolate one. Nice work! Three different types of pentagons are hidden in this picture. Since each shape can face four different directions, you have a total of 12 unique pentagons. What cutting lads you two are! I hope you'll stop by and solve puzzles with me again sometime. Nice. So now, let me go in here. But, before we talk with our favorite little guy here, Perjudo, we're going to call it an episode. Thanks again for watching. As always, leave it in the comments how many of the 78 puzzles I've solved so far you were able to do on your first try. And don't forget that if you tell me you got that stupid chocolate puzzle on your first try, I'm going to call you out and I'm going to call you a liar. Okay? There's just no way. There's no way. Also, leave a like on the video. See you next time. Thanks for stopping by the Renaissance Gaming Monastery. I hope you join our community on Discord and Twitter. These videos are produced with a lot of hard work and love. If you think they're worth a dollar, I'd be grateful for your contribution. You can send a thanks donation or become a member on YouTube. You can also support through PayPal, Patreon, or even with cryptocurrency. All links are in the description. See you on the next video.